Our second panel in Zurich is about finding our way through the jungle of a new ESG standards. There is a clear consensus in the industry that there is a need for standardization of ESG investing. One of the objectives of this standardization is to ensure comparability of reported information and to fight against greenwashing of investment products. For our discussion today, I'm very pleased to welcome in Zurich, Bayun Shen. Good morning, Bayun. Good morning, Asa. You're a sustainable investing specialist who joined the LGT Bank in 2018. We have now Shela Olong. Good morning, Shela. Good morning. You're the president of CFA Society Switzerland, who has over 20 years experience in investment research and portfolio management. Antoine Queno. Good morning, Antoine. Hello. Antoine, you're a co-founder and a senior consultant at Incozo. You have 29 years of experience in the finance industry. In Geneva, we have Angela De Wolf, partner, sponsor, invest. Good morning, Angela. Hi, hello. Angela, you are active in finance for 20 years. Your focus is on responsible investment. I'm co-hosting this panel with Dimitri Senik. Dimitri, good morning. Good morning. Dimitri is the leader of Investor Trust Services at PwC Switzerland. He will start with the first questions. Thank you, Elsa. And if I may add to your introduction, um, while the standardization per se is a very welcome development, it might have a side effect that various standards um, may actually create a confusion among investment professionals and investors. And it becomes really increasingly difficult to navigate in this jungle of various standards and regulations. So we have a difficult issue, and that's why we have difficult questions to our panelists to ask. And the first question is for you, Antoine. So Antoine, what do you think should those standardization initiatives really, um, really uh, undertake in order to help investors and investment professionals better uh, evaluate and compare various investment products in the ESG area? Okay, um, I want to make the following point. Any initiative that can contribute to the um, uh, common understanding of what we are really talking about is certainly welcome. What I don't think is that the interpretation of those uh, figures and, 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 and uh, ideas, they will not be able to be, be standardized. Why? Because uh, everybody has uh, his own view, everybody has his own, his own uh, values and, and, and objectives. So uh, on this side, I, I actually, I don't think it's, it's, a, it's a sensible objective because um, uh, an, an investor lacking the, uh, the know-how, they will take advice from uh, typically from an ESG rating uh, agency. And they will very quickly realize that uh, the informations they get from the different rating agencies are very heterogeneous. For, for the same company, they will receive uh, very different information. So a, a big heterogeneity, actually, the uh, there, are, there have been studies done, and the correlation is around five, so very low for, uh, for, for sometimes the same uh, topic. And so uh, I think uh, the, the message for any investor is really to uh, get to know the, um, the rating agency, the methodology, and ideally to take advice from different ones, and at the end, to really know itself. For me, as an asset owner, what, are, what do I want? Thank you, Antoine. Um, Bayoun, in your view, what are the biggest gaps between the ESG investment needs of investors and the capabilities of investment managers? That's a very good question, and I think I can actually follow what Antoine just mentioned about um, the information that investors get. So the question you asked is basically a matching issue of the supply and demand. So what the ESG investors are looking for and also what the investment managers are offering. And I think for the supply side, 
there is a lot of information and a lot of terms flowing around like ESG investing, impact investing, sustainable investing. But what does this offering of products really entail for investors? What do they get out of it? There is no common standard. I mean, there are the rating agencies that you could get reference from, but I still that more standards are called for. I think the uh, like EU led the sustainable finance disclosure regulation, SFDR, is a good example. It is a regulation and it has set a standard what kind of product is ESG promoting, what kind of product is really ha have higher standards, so it's pure sustainable investment, do not harm any of other sustainable investment objectives, and what, stand uh, what product has no active consideration of ESG. So I think this is a good start. But I think what is also needed is also more communication and also um, transparency from the investment manager side. Because there, then investor could know what is being really offered. And on the other hand, I see another gap is from the, like the demand side. There's still a lot of um, gaps to fill when it comes to offering. Because now we, have, we do have a lot of product already. But if you look at area, for example, in public equities, if you want to invest in human rights or if you want to invest in biodiversity, what you can do now mostly is about exclusion, not invest in any companies. But how do you invest to promote or nurture such um, initiatives or achieve such goals? I think there's still a lot of space to develop and I guess that need time and also expertise to have a good product with convincing track record for investors. Thank you, Raiden. Let's go back to Geneva. Angela. Hi. Um, how can EHG investment standards attempt to address such issues as the low correlation of EHG ratings among different ratings providers? Yeah, I think that, that's the core of the question. And I think this topic of, um, uh, I would say, different opinion and different rating agency coming out has been highlighted in the last uh, two years. And indeed, for investors today, they sometimes get lost into translation because they, they found so many solutions with different approaches. Nevertheless, I think we have to separate this question in two elements. There is a real potential to standardize indicators, quantify indicators like emission of CO2, like, uh, um, I don't know, women on board or water use. So this is typically KPIs that can be standardized and it's really important, thanks to Europe, that we get in a standardization approach. But from the fact, like in finance, once you have defined, standardized uh, information, quantitative information, remains the element that this one cannot be standardized, is the final opinion about a company. So you can use a similar data, but reach a conclusion on the ESG quality, on the ESG impact of the company that diverge from an analyst, from another analyst. So this is where I think it's very important to join forces for standardization, but still keep a certain richness, a certain originality from various approaches. Thank you, Angela. Maybe a question on the, um, what could, on the, on the cost actually uh, related to the ESG, to what extent can the higher overall costs of an ESG investment strategy hold institutional investors back from in adopting ESG? Oh, yes, the cost is all. I would say that for investors today, there are some barriers and there are still some difficulties to join uh, uh, sustainable investing. Probably the confusion on ESG is one, so uh, not understanding, but additional one, it's not anymore the performance, but it's really about should I pay more for investing in a sustainable way? And of course, choosing to invest in a sustainable way means also that you are uh, looking for additional information, you are uh, looking for additional expertise, which sometimes bring the price of your investment solution a little bit higher uh, than one it can be a standard investment. Also, we found now that we with the time and with the massive uh, investment in uh, new funds, 
we get this uh, higher price becoming even uh, low. But you are right because institutional and very large institutional investors are today very sensitive to the question of the cost because the returns are very low and uh, they sometimes are reluctant to pay more uh, for something that they don't see exactly what is the added value. I would say that uh, the regulation uh, is forcing in a certain way uh, investor to, in many cases, go in that direction and also to, to add this um, additional information that is environmental, social and governance and to measure also the impact of their investment. But the sensitivity to cost still remain quite an important element uh, for refraining um, large investors to join uh, this movement. Thank you, Angela. Uh, now I have a question for you, Bayon. So as a practitioner, how do you overcome the problem of the bias of the ESG underlying data, such as ESG ratings and practice? For example, um, do you obtain ESG ratings from multiple providers or do you obtain consensus-based ratings? Do you apply your own judgment on the top of that? Yeah, so this is a great question. Uh, uh, we actually have quite a lot of experience at LGT uh, using ESG data. And what we have um, is we have our own engine uh, to really calculate our own uh, ESG rating. That means that we source raw ESG data, not the rating data itself, but the underlying, for example, what is the carbon emission of the company and what is the trend in the last three years? Do they have any reduction objectives? Such level of raw data. And there we source it from different providers and then we will have understanding what the providers are really, um, what is the underlying of their rating. And from there we have established our own understanding. Because there, um, I guess different providers, they have different um, focus points. Some of them focus on financial materiality. Some of them focus on the impact on environment and society. So at LGT we made up our mind, we want to show a rating that is really indicating the sustainability quality of the investment. So we have our own methodology with our own engine and we have calculated our own rating. And so I would say that it also needs a constant improvement because um, recently we have added the impact of product and service of a company this dimension into the ESG rating calculation because traditionally you always look at the E, S and G performance of the company and respective controversies. But we believe it is also important to look at the product and service. What does this do to uh, environment and society? That's why we also factor it in. So I would say like a uh, long term improvements, it's also needed to overcome such obstacles. Thank you. Byron. Now, Sheila, I have a question for you as the uh, CEO of uh, CFA Society Switzerland. So it's, it's good to have a good standard or a good regulation in the ESG area. But it's also important that the investment professionals and investors actually understand the information presented in compliance with those standards and regulations, which means that uh, education and upskilling of the investment community is very important. Can you tell us about the efforts of uh, CFA Institute in relation to educating the investment community in the ESG area? Yes, thanks. This is a, an important question because integration of the ESG principles are essential for ESG investing success. Uh, I had the good fortune of hearing Paul Volcker years ago. Paul Volcker, as chair of the U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve, stood up to the economic issue of the day, inflation, and defeated it and successfully uh, addressed it. And he challenged the financial community and said, don't focus on developing more mathematical precision for existing theories, but come up with a new big idea. And the new big idea is ESG investing. And it's important that this become integrated into the financial lexicon. And this is a massive educational program because we're all used to, as financial uh, professionals, we know how to optimize investments with regard to risk and return but we haven't learned how to integrate ESG into this equation. And this is critically important. The CFA uh, Institute has developed an ESG investing certificate that takes the financial professional's perspective, who still has the responsibility to optimize a portfolio with regard to risk and return, 
but increasingly has the requirement to integrate ESG factors. And the, the ESG um, investing certificate takes the financial professional's perspective and brings it into what they can uh, contribute to the whole benefit, both to the investor as well as to the society and planet. Thank you, Sheila. Dimitri, you've been actively engaged in the global standard setting bodies of the CFA Institute. The Indies Institute is currently developing a new ESG disclosure standards for investment products. Why do we need another standard, as we are already so many of them? Well, this is a very good question, uh, Elsa. Thank you. So, first of all, um, the majority of the current standards and regulations in the ESG area are either about the corporate issue disclosures at the company level or about the ESG investment approaches or about uh, specific instruments like you know, green bonds. So there is no truly global standard yet at the level of the investment product. So this is why CF Institute has taken this initiative to develop a voluntary and a global standard that would address the transparency and disclosure issue at the level of investment product. There are already some regulations and codes that already deal with that. For example, the EU Sustainable Finance Disclosure Regulation or the European SRI Transparency Code, they also deal with disclosures at the investment product level. But those are regional frameworks, right? CF Institute is looking at the global level. Mm -hmm. And uh, before CF Institute started developing the standard, uh, there was a consultation paper issued last year and um, for public comment and the responses um, and CF Institute received more than 100 uh, comment letters. The respondents were overwhelmingly supportive of the idea of developing a global voluntary standard for disclosure of the in of investment products. Um, by the way, the, um, the standards are due to be issued for public comment. So the exposure draft uh, will be issued in the middle of May this year. Mm -hmm. So very soon and everyone uh, is welcome to provide feedback uh, on those a proposed standards to CF Institute. Thank you, Dimitri. Thank you, everybody, for participating in this discussion.